Hurry, I'll find them. You made broke up. We got separated. Franz! He did not drown. The storm that swept us all to this shore will do the same for Franz. He's alive somewhere along this beach. Dear wife, if it takes all night, we'll bring you your son. Thanks. <laughs> January 10, in the year of our Lord, 1801. The great storm which swept us upon this strange shore and took our vessel down to the deep abated with the coming of a new day. And yet the warmth of the sun brought us no comfort, nor brightened our lives. For though I'd searched through the night, I could find no sign of our dear friends. He might well have been swept down the beach where Ernest is searching more of the ship's debris down that way. Where are we? You can't be certain of that, darling. The storm blew the ship off course for many days. But where isn't as important as how we are. We're safe. Franz isn't with you. Both of you. Come for a moment. In the storm yesterday, it must have seemed you were being cast into the devil's own backyard. But now the storm is over. Look around. It's an alien place, strange to us, but no purgatory this. No forsaken place. Your little ducklings have made their way to shore. Surely that's reason not to give up hope for Franz. You go looking for your brother and you come back with a cow. She was trapped in a tidal pool. I couldn't let her drown. She'll be very useful to us, Ernest. Any sign of the crew? Any others? By the time the ship piled up on that reef, we were alone. The crew abandoned us and took the lifeboats. And gone to their reward, I think. We've only searched the beach. Ross could very well have taken shelter inland. I'll look there. Meantime, we must establish ourselves, even as we look for Franz. Now, the sea threw most of the wreck up with us. Reclaim what you can, Ernest.
I'll try and start a fire going. None of us has eaten since yesterday morning. That answers any questions about what's on the menu. was worth that. It's the wreck attracting the sharks. The ship stores salt beef, dried fish. Papa! No sign. If we didn't find him, perhaps he'll find us. I set a signal fire. Should be visible for miles. What are we here? Seems to be in good shape. Good boy. That could be one of our most important finds. Tomorrow morning, Ernest and I will row off the coast and get more of a look at the island. Sharks. Swarms of them. be many jackets just like that one. Your mother sewed every stitch. It belonged to France. How will you tell mother? we've chosen to commemorate his loss. We beg your blessing on our departed friends and commend him to heaven's care. Amen. Amen. Franz gave me this portrait. He painted it himself. Something of him should be left here.
Franz was a happy child, bright, full of life. Each of us has a particularly fond memory of him. Let that be your last thought in this service. Take a moment to say a private goodbye to him, each in his own prayer. For dear Franz, the trials of the world were over. For us, his family, however, they were just beginning. Even in our bereavement over Franz, circumstances dictated we make provision for ourselves in the coming days. The living must live, and in that was a blessing, for it took our minds from our sorrow. Franz was never truly out of our thoughts. Certainly not the day we recovered a chest containing some of our clothes, including our dear sons. We managed to salvage all manner of useful things which would ease our stay in this new place, even miraculously down to powder and ball and other weapons. Never was there a land closer to paradise. Yet our new land, which we had christened New Switzerland, held many dangers, and we were reminded constantly of the need for vigilance. The day came when we were once again to know fear and uncertainty as our constant shadow. Father! John, what could make such marks? A man. Be a giant of a man. Look at the size of those tracks. An animal, maybe? Some kind of great ape. This answers the question. A shell? A conch fashioned into a horn. You see the end? It's not just broken off, but smooth. No ape did that. Natives in the South Seas used horns like this to signal their tribes of danger. Or a call to war. But there's no reason to suppose that any natives here would be unfriendly. It could also mean we're all in the greatest of danger. It was clear we needed a more formidable place if forced to defend ourselves. In my searching for our lost friends, I had come upon an area I thought would suit us well. We gathered our meager belongings and made our way there with all good speed, driven by the urgency of this new threat.
Ernest, could you get that sling off the crate? I think we can use it. I've got an idea. Johan, you're going to think I've been out in the sun too long. Look. I've been watching the monkeys. All they have to do to escape danger is climb the nearest tree. Once they're in those branches, they're safe. You think we could do the same? I feel rather foolish saying the word... Treehouse? Well, why do you think I brought you here? But now is not the time to discuss that. The darkness will be upon us soon. Could you and Marie ready the shelter for sleeping and secure the animals? Ernest and I must set up such defenses as we can. In spite of reassurances to my family, I do wonder what will become of us. What dangers lie ahead? What is the mysterious other presence on this island? I couldn't sleep. John, I've been thinking. There are other people here, and they are unfriendly. Surely they've had ample opportunity. That might have been a very old shell. Left perhaps by natives traveling from place to place. Those could have been animal tracks and mere coincidence that we found them beside the shell. I pray we were fleeing only shadows. could accept a life here. But Ernest hasn't chosen a profession. Marie has barely begun to read. I promise you. Our children are not going to spend the rest of their lives trapped here. Well, make no mistake, one day we're going home. What are you two doing away? There's too much been going on to sleep. Hmm. All right, then. Come and hear about the new home we'll be building. A tree house. Tree house? <laughs> <laughs> it was your mother's idea. <laughs>
our dear Franz had been returned to us. He'd received terrible blows to his head and throat when swept ashore that fateful day. His feet had been torn to shreds by sharp coral. Yet the hand of Providence had surely been with him. He had survived. How are you feeling now, dear? Better. He should feel better. For the past week, he slept like the dead. <laughs> well, let's not put it just that way. I watched you bury me. I knew you couldn't talk, but couldn't you make a signal or do something? That's why I made the conch horn. But it hurt. I couldn't make a sound. I guess I really never knew what I was doing. I just sort of wandered around. I saw you. It was all blurry, like I was dreaming. There won't be a bird around for miles that isn't stone deaf. <laughs> There's a value in that. We're in a strange land. We don't know just what we face. If ever we're separated and want to contact the others to warn of trouble or seek help... The conch can be our signal, our call of alarm. Never to be used in fun, only in times of great danger or emergency. Very well, then. Today, we're all going to master that instrument. Ernest and Marie, mother too, all of us. Then let us pray. It's a sound we never hear again. Hear, hear. <laughs> <laughs> 